Wow, Cody, that AMD sheet metal looks great. Yeah, man, everything went in nice. I mean, this is the first time I've ever done panels like this, and I think it came out great. You know, everything fit nice. The uh, Easy to install. Yeah, yep, and once I got that MIG welder set up good, you know, I was able to get some <laughs> nice clean spot welds. Yeah. I was able That's to good. fill all my Clico holes, and I was able, I mean, everything even mounted up nice to the OE dash. It looks really, really good. That's, a, that's impressive. That's amazing how perfect that fits. Yeah. So what's, so what's going on here? So this is our uh, body panel adhesive. You know, it's a little stronger okay, yeah. than a seam sealer. Yeah, I saw Mark using the Corvair. Yeah, so right now it's curing, but once it's cured, I'll be able to sand it, level it, and I'll be able to kind of hide that factory GM seam. Oh, okay. Got. You just sand it down when it dries. Yep. Plus, it's going to give it some structure, so that way, you know, with this being an older car, I think it'll really stiffen it up. That sounds like a good idea. Cool. So what's next? So now I'm working on a little A-pillar patch right here where the windshield channel is. Yeah. I got some rot there. Got some rot on the top third. Uh -huh. Hoping I can salvage this middle piece. Yeah. And then kind of just make some little templates here and here. You know, if it turns out I can't weld anything or attach yeah. any metal there. I'm gonna have to cut this all out and start from scratch. So I got some Versa Bend work. Maybe a shrinker stretcher. Definitely. And the uh, gonna make it out of 18 gauge. Hoping this is still 18 gauge. <laughs> well, it looks kind of thick in spots. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any holes through there, so we'll see all what right. happens. Awesome. That sounds good, dude. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Cool. There's definitely a lot of rot and rust on these A-pillars. I gotta cut all that out, make my patch panel, and find good metal to weld to. I've been getting a little better with my welding, but this is definitely gonna prove a challenge. Cutting out this A-pillar can be kind of tricky. Use whatever cutoff wheels or recip saws you can to make a clean cut that's easily patchable while still removing all the rust. With my rust cut out, I then cleaned up the edges with a die grinder to give myself a good straight edge and nice clean metal to weld to. This patch is going to be just like any other. I'm going to start using a manila folder as a paper template that I'm going to bend, trim, and tweak to fit right into place. Spending some time making this template is going to save me metal and it's going to save me time in the long run. With my paper template dialed in, it's time to transfer it to metal. I'm gonna use a Sharpie and mark the surface, lay down my paper template, and then use a scribe to transfer that. This is gonna give me a good, precise line to cut from. For this patch, I'm using 18 gauge sheet metal. Whenever possible, it's important to match the factory gauge because it's gonna give you the best weld and the best end result. It's important to take pictures while you're working on your project. It'll help you document what you've done. You might need to reference them later. Plus the video guys think it's cool to put them on Instagram. As you can see, I cut my patch a little large. To trim it down to size, I'm gonna use a Sharpie to mark the areas that need trimmed. When you're making a patch panel, take your time. Check fitment, trim a little bit, and then check again. It's important to get it just right. You don't want to remove too much material and have to start over again. Now that we're pretty close to fitting, it's time to bust out the files and really dial that patch into place. Uh, 
I got my panel cut out, it's fitting great. Now I have to weld it in. My welds are looking a little better. My technique's coming along nicely. I'm bouncing around from spot to spot to minimize any warp or distortion I'm gonna have. And I got the welder set just right. When I weld this patch in, I'm gonna take my time and move around the patch. This is gonna ensure I don't put too much heat in the panel and possibly warp it. With the first panel done, I'm moving up the A-pillar and starting my second patch. So the whole purpose of the paper template is actually save time in the long run. By being able to quickly fine tune this template, I can then transfer it to my metal and my metal is going to fit right the first time. The process is going to be exactly the same. First, I'm going to start with my paper template. Then, I'm going to transfer that paper template to my metal and cut it out. With that cut out, I'm gonna take it, file fit it, get it just right, and then weld it in. All right guys, so I got my rusty piece out, and before I close this back up with a new patch panel, I gotta address the rust that's inside this channel. So to do so, I'm gonna use my wire brush, some low VOC pre, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna clean this whole inside of the channel out. So once I have this clean and ready for paint, I'm going to choose to coat it with our internal frame coating. This is designed to encapsulate rust and it's 360 degree nozzle. It allows you to get into these channels, it allows you to get into frame rails, all the hidden areas you couldn't spray before. It has all the same features as our regular rust encapsulator and will ensure that the rust won't come from the inside out for years to come. Let's get to it. After hitting the A-pillar with pre and a wire brush, I'm using internal frame coating with its hose and 360 degree nozzle to evenly coat the inside of the pillar. This is my best shot at preventing future corrosion from ever happening. It's always a good idea to coat the inside of a patch piece whenever possible, because once it's welded in, you'll never get to it again. After locating our patch panel with the stitch weld magnets, I can begin tacking it into place with the MiG-175. So now that I've completed the A-pillar, I'm moving up to the windshield frame. The process is going to be similar, but I have a compound curve to deal with. To take care of this, I'm going to use the shrinker stretcher. The shrinker jaws will bunch metal together, causing a curve on my flange. The stretcher will do exactly the opposite. When you use them together, it's impressive the pieces you can make. I'm marking the windshield so I can make this patch in small sections. I'm using the Versa bend, and it only has a working length of 20 inches. I'm using my body saw to get in and start cutting out this rusty metal. Before you start building your patch, it's important to get all the rusted metal out of the way. Here you'll see me use a die grinder and even a panel separating tool again to get those stubborn pieces off.
Instead of a paper template, I'm just going to rough cut a piece of sheet metal. I'm going to do this using our electric shears. I need to put a 90 degree angle into the patch piece, so I bent it using our Versa Bend break. To start putting some curve into this patch, I need to make some marks that indicate where the curve begins on the windshield. I need to mark both the curve as it goes back and down. Our shrinker stretcher combo on a base plate is extremely convenient and super versatile, but it's not necessary. You can put an individual shrinker stretcher in a vise or bolt it right to a table. I began by stretching the patch panel back. This is going to allow it to follow the curve of the windshield on the top. Once I have that dialed in, I'm then going to stretch the top piece and drop it. This is going to allow us to get the compound curvature that that windshield has. Just like trimming a panel to fit, when you're shrinking or stretching, you want to take your time and dial it in. You can correct a little too much shrink or a little too much stretch, but it's not going to come out as nice as taking your time and getting it just right the first time. With my patch having the right compound curve, it's now time to do some file fitment and trimming to get it to fit just right. I'm using a Sharpie to mark where I need to trim. Now that my first patch is trimmed and fitting nicely, I can begin moving across the window channel, approaching each new patch in a similar method. First thing we're going to do is get the contour along where the roof skin meets the frame. So we're actually going to be stretching this lower flange. We're going to stretch it. So that way it'll pull the metal back towards the roof. And then after that, we're going to stretch this top and that's going to drop it down into the frame. Before I weld these patches in place, I got to hit this roof line with some compressed air to blow out the dust and debris, clean it up, and spray some internal frame coating. Again, this is going to be the last chance I have to prevent any more corrosion from happening behind here. Now it's time to get these patches welded in. I'm going to use a combination of our trusty stitch weld magnets and some pinch weld clamps to get this fitting nice and tight. And now I've got some punched holes to fill for spot welds on the bottom flange and a butt weld across the top. This top patch is definitely a little thinner than that A pillar. I really have to take my time here, use some 23 wire, bounce back and forth, and minimize the heat I'm putting into this panel.
So this patch is a big piece, and it took some trial and error to get just right. We did some shrinking in some spots, some stretching in others, and it's amazing how if you work on one area, it can drastically affect another. It takes some trial and error, but we got it just right. The MiG-175 is a great all-around machine, but since the MiG-135 is here and it's awesome for sheet metal, I decided to use it. With all my panels in and looking good, I grabbed a two inch surface prep tool and cleaned everything up, blended my welds. So I gotta tell you guys, the Shrinker Stretcher was definitely the hero of this project. It took just a little bit of practice to get the hang of it, but I was able to knock out that windshield frame. I'm sure if you had a project where you needed to make a compound curve, you'd be able to do the same. On the next episode of Repair, Restore, Revive, Cody waxes the Camaro and drives it. Will the day ever come? It's not on your list. You got it.